I almost quit. I'm a country boy. I'm from West Virginia. I don't know nothing about this big time stuff. I just, I never even asked to be big. I wanted to be effective, not famous. Famous is the consequences of being effective. I didn't know nothing about being famous and I didn't like it. And so there I was. And when you first knew, everybody attacks you first and figures you out later. Because though we say you're innocent until proven guilty, the reality is you're really guilty until proven innocent. <clears throat> but I didn't know that then, and I was young, upstart. You have to understand that you're looking at a 60 year old man, but you're talking about something that's happening to a guy in his late 20s with little kids. And the first time I was in the Washington Post, the article was so vicious it made me nauseous. I was so shocked that you could say that stuff about somebody you didn't even know based on assumptions and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. They piece it all together and you don't get to say anything back. So I decided I don't want this. I was preaching for Pastor Bishop Donnie Mears and I was, nobody knew it because preachers can override their feelings and function. I preached the place was on fire, but inside I want to quit. I told God, I'm through with this. I'm not going through this. I don't need this. I don't, see, I don't need that. I'm, I'm a guy who likes to go get his own chicken wings. I don't have to have all of that stuff to be happy because I wasn't raised with it. I can make it. You can throw me in an apartment right. and give me just a, a little skillet, a cast iron skillet. You know what, I, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and some season salt and stuff and a couple of wings. Uh, I will run you out of here. I will run you out. Okay. Okay. So I thought, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this because I don't need this and I didn't ask for this. I'm only doing this because of, of what happened in my life, of the circumstances that happened in my life. He put me on stage. I didn't ask for it. And when I saw how much it cost, I thought, you can have that right back here. You can have that right back up in here. I don't need it. So I was mad inside and I was hurt. And uh, I stayed up in the fellowship with the pastors because I didn't want to go back to my room and sulk in my own sorrows. And they said, there's a lady downstairs waiting to see you. The service was over and the fellowship was over. The pastors were starting to leave. I was trying to outweigh her. I thought she'd give up and leave. And when I finally came down the steps, she was there. And she was just a willowy bit of a woman. And uh, she said, Bishop James, she said, uh, I've been in the hospital. She said, uh, I was pregnant in my fallopian tubes and the baby died in my tubes and I was carrying around a dead baby and the toxicity from the baby almost killed me. And she said, the only thing that kept me alive was hearing you preach. She said, if you hadn't been preaching to me every day, I swear I would have died. And then she looked at me and she said, it's for us. It's not for them. It's for us. It hit me so hard. I didn't even get her name. I got in the car and cried all the way back to my room because she reminded me why I was there.